Welcome to the live chat. We've got one person at the moment, but that's all good. Hello, two people. <laughs> we are live, a walk and talk. Actually, I'm not what I'm gonna have to do if Farm Dog stops pulling for just a moment. We are with Farm Dog. We're out for a walk. I've gone live today um, because it's gonna pour with rain for the next three days. So I thought while I'm out and about with the, with the hund, who is driving me mad already. You know what he's like when we did the canal walk? Bit more history, let's put these on. Because I can't see a thing otherwise. That's better. Looks warm, it is. It's about 22 degrees at the moment, which for where we are, hello Pete, how are you? Um, so I thought, yeah, while I'm out and about with the dog, I'll do, I'll do a little bit of a walk and talk. I know when I said about doing Alma, and I'm still intending to do Alma as a live stream, a lot of people said, can I live stream at nine o'clock at night? Or sort of in the evening when they're around, which is fine to a degree, but when I'm doing a walk and talk, nine o'clock at night is pitch black, so that doesn't always work. Come on this way, Dee. This way, bud. This way, bud. Good boy. So, we're out and about. Hello, everybody. What have we got? 30, 33 people already? That's amazing. I'll turn the camera around in a minute. So, where are we today? We're on the Ebury Way. Not far from where I live. Um, I've walked on part of this before. When I did my first walk and talk, when it was, what was it, minus four and it was frosty and we were walking along and I was just chatting about what was going on in my life. I walked on part of it then. So we're doing the other way today and I'll chat a little bit about it. It's a lovely day, but like I say, it's going to pour with rain over the next three days, I think. So I thought, you know what, while I'm out and about, let's go live and chat. So, 48 people, 12 likes. How's that work? 48 people, 48 likes. That's how it should be. It's a glorious day. I'm going to turn the camera around in a moment. But uh, yeah, Ebury Way, disused railway that's now for cycling and walking and all sorts of stuff. Um, come along here quite a lot. I'll talk a little bit about the history of it in a moment. Morning. Oh, that's oh, that's actually those ones. Just make sure. I have to be careful here. I can't let Dee off, the, uh, off his lead because of the uh, cyclists. And they do come hooning along here. And I'll be honest, I was one of them. When I used to work as a postman at Rickmansworth, and sometimes I would cycle to work, I would cycle on the Ebury Way, because you could just come straight from my house onto the Ebury Way, strapped to Rickmansworth, and that's where I used to work as a postman. Well, partly delivery postman. So, um, yeah, Ebury Way. A little bit of history about the Ebury Way. It's all overgrown and wooded now, but it wasn't. Back in there, years and years ago, yonks and yonks ago, um, so this railway, which it was, was the, um, the dream, the idea of Lord Ebury. And that was Robert Grosvenor, first Baron Ebury. Was his full title, Lord Ebury. And he lived at Moor Park Mansion, just up the road from here, where Moor Park Golf Course is and Moor Park Mansion still is, which was qu quite close to Rickmansworth. And what his plan was, was to link up east and west parts of Hertfordshire, where a lot of the railway lines ran north-south, and there were branch lines at different places. So, um, and again, I apologise. It's very difficult, unless I bring the camera right up close to me, to see what everyone's writing in the chat. I know it's going to be hotter wherever people are. Um, it's October here, and 23, 24 degrees is very unusual um, for us. So anyway, yeah. So, um, so his plan was to build a railway about nine miles long. And the railway would go from Watford coming off of the existing line, so it would branch off, go out through Rickmansworth, and then out to Uxbridge, which would go into Buckinghamshire, and it would link up, which then Middlesex and, you know, other going over canals and stuff like that. Now, there's an interesting link to this, and this is, I mean, it's tenuous, but I'm going to go with it, because I like it. So a bit more information. Moor Park Mansion, where Lord Ebury lived, um, during World War II, was used by the 1st Airborne Division. It was requisitioned and used by 1st Airborne Division. Operation Market Garden, made famous by the film A Bridge Too Far, was planned and run from Moor Park Mansion, just up the road. They have got one of the rooms you can go and visit now, and the room's called the Arnhem Room. <coughs> Excuse me, I <coughs> swallowed a bug. <coughs> Bit of protein, lovely. Um, so yeah, it was run from there. So talking of A Bridge Too Far, when they did the route out from Watford, or from Ricky to Watford, whichever way they went, they had to cross three rivers, the Gade, the Colne and the Chess, and the Grand Union Canal. 
a bridge too far because they got as far as Rickmansworth and it never went any further. They never managed to do the stretch from Rickmansworth out to Uxbridge and it was considered a failure. It was his idea in 1860 and no notes today. You notice I'm not looking down, no notes. Um, and it was built in a, well, it was opened in 1862. So 1862 it opened to the public and it carried cargo to um, Dickinson's Croxley Mill. Remember when we did the walk and talk on the canal to Croxley Mill? They had a branch with a little station, so Croxy Mill. It used to transport all sorts of goods. There was an asbestos factory up the road, which obviously wasn't too good. Watford Power Station, coal and bits and bobs. And from Rickmansworth, one of the more important ones was Watercress. So the Watercress would come from Rickmansworth to Watford and into London. So they'd have fresh Watercress in London. There you go, interesting fact. But the railway, um, sort of fell into decline. Public weren't really using it very much with the advent of cars and all that kind of stuff and that sort of thing. And so in 1951, it was closed to the public. They did a few special days where the, the trains would come and people would train enthusiasts would come. But as far as cargo and transport and stuff, it would continue through to almost 1983, which was when Croxley Mill finally shut down. Um, so to consider that a failure, 1862 to 1951. That's 89 years. And then it carried on doing cargo to 83. How is that a failure? I, don't, I can't. I think, that's, I think they considered it a failure because it didn't go all the way out to Uxbridge, is probably why. Um, but it's what it is. So, what I'm going to do now, because we're getting to a bit now where this opens up. Good boy, D. Wait. I just need to turn the camera around. Here's a nightmare for pulling when I'm trying to turn the camera around. No, turn the camera. <laughs> there we go. So you can see how beautiful it is. So you haven't got to look at my ugly face now. You can look at the scenery, which will be really nice. So we're coming over the coal now. The chest, the gate, and the, the Grand Union are back the other way. So if I turn the camera right the way around, that way around, that way around, we'll get there in a minute. That way up the Ebury Way goes to Rickmansworth. The whole length of it from Watford out to Rickmansworth is about three and a half miles. And when it used to go to the old Rickmansworth station, it was about four. So that way goes out all out to Rickmansworth. And then this way is what takes us into Watford. So I'm doing the Watford leg today. And we're going in towards Watford to Oxy Park. Then I'm going to walk back around past Croxy Mill. But this is just glorious. This is why I wanted to come out this way today with the dog. It's lovely out here. Look at that. It's not just wonderful. Come on, D. Good boy. Good boy. Not too far because you're going to pull my arm off. Good boy, good boy. Yeah. I know people like to see farm dog. There he is. D. Hey bud. There he is. Good boy. Come on then. Now you might not be able to see it, but you've got Sandy Lodge out this way. Out that direction is Moor Park, which is where Moor Park Mansion is, out towards Rickmansworth. HMS Warrior is out that direction towards Northwood. HMS Warrior is a, well, a NATO Joint Services base for the British military and um, they ran all of the Falklands War uh, probably loads of others as well actually but I know the Falklands was definitely run out of there HMS Warrior at Northwood um, now you're not going to be able to see it unfortunately which is a real pity but just out through the trees there the other side of there is where I used to teach the school I used to teach at is just through there but when it's winter autumn time you can see right through there which is a pity so we're crossing the coal now. So this was running one of the three rivers it had to cross, including the canal. And uh, yeah, I just, you know, like I say, I was, I was sitting in the man cave this morning and I was setting a few things up here and there. Yeah, this way, this way, this way, this way. Not going that way today, mate. Good boy. Come on this way, this way. Um, and I sat there and thought, you know, I mean, I'll take him out in the rain anyway. I'll, you know, we'll go out for a walk. That's not a problem. And we get soaked and we come back and we'll both have a nice old shower and warm up, which is lovely. Problem is, for streaming, for doing videos, when it's pouring me rain, you can't because your phone just gets absolutely soaked. So, 49 people watching, 37 likes. Come on, people. It should be 49 and 49, shouldn't it? Anyway. Three days of rain. So the other thing I'm going to be doing over the next couple of days as well, I've insulated the roof of the man cave. Did I mention that in yesterday's video? I have put the insulation in, the, in between the rafters, so if it rains, if it's heavy rain, <laughs> we're going to see whether it works as a bit of a sound insulation as well. I don't know if it will, 
This is, I'm looking through, I mean, I don't know if the camera does it justice or not. I think it does. I'm looking ahead of me thinking, oh, this looks, this is just brilliant. Looks wonderful. And I'm enjoying every second of it. So, yeah, I mean, I know I always say this. This will probably be half hour, I suppose. Um, the route I'm doing is going to be about four, four and a half miles, maybe five. But when we get down into the Watford section, when we get to Oxy Park, it's all sort of a little bit more industrial estate and there's a lot of traffic and we come across the back of, I don't know if we're about to see actually, when we come at the other end of here, the back of Watford Football Ground and Watford General Hospital, which has all been extended. Sorry, I keep moving my arm down and the whole camera moves. Sorry if I'm making you all feel sick and dizzy. <laughs> I do apologise. There we go, 53 watching, 47 likes. That's more like it. <laughs> so yeah, out for the walk with the hound. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I was going to talk about, about the Ebury Way. Not really. There's another branch actually that comes off from, you've got the main line that runs up to um, Euston from Watford. And then you've got the all stopping line that goes through Lower High Street and swings round. Well, both of these branches, this one, and there was another branch line that used to run actually right past the back of the school I used to work at, which is also disused now, which I think was the one that went out to Croxy Mill originally. And um, yeah, they, they all just, they all linked up at Lower High Street. It's a pity they're all closed off because I thought, I know they said a few years ago they were going to reopen the branch and they were going to join up from Lower High Street to the Metropolitan Line. And Mrs P said when she was getting the train into London, the day she goes in, into London on the train, she could walk down the hill, literally walk down the hill, get on that, get the branch line to the Met Line and carry on, but they didn't do it in the end. So uh, anyway, just thought I'd pass that bit on. <laughs> <laughs> Not to use this bit of information, but you know, you never know. People might be interested. So when I get back to the man cave later on, I'm going to do some prep work on Alma. So Alma is going to be my live stream let's play. I've got to work out the times I'm going to be doing it, which is a little bit trickier. And it won't. All of the episodes won't be live. Some will be live. Some what I'll do myself. But on the live streams is when we'll do the decision making and asking people what they want me to do, because it's going to be guided by you guys, that's the point, I think. I hope. Good morning, good morning. Hello to everyone in the chat. Like I'm sorry I'm not calling out individual names. It's a bit tricky when I'm walking and the dog's yanking me. I've got this out extended a little bit further away from me. You know what I'm like with my eyesight. I've got sunglasses. What I need to get is prescription sunglasses. That would be a lot better, wouldn't it? Um, yeah. It's all a bit overgrown at the moment. The River Colne... This side of it goes to Oxy Park. The other side of it is all being redeveloped. It all used to be wasteland that ran right up to the back of uh, Watford General Hospital and the football ground. And they built Thomas Sawyer Way, which I'll talk about in a moment actually, because Thomas Sawyer, when I did my Leaves and Airfield talk and I talked about the Air Cadets, I talked about Thomas Sawyer. Thomas Sawyer was one of the Air Cadets that I taught when I was an instructor and a warrant officer. Now he was the young lad that joined 2-9 Artillery, then joined 4-2 Commando, and was killed in Helmand. Um, so Captain Thomas Sawyer, and they built this link road that goes around behind the hospital and the football ground, and they called it Thomas Sawyer Way, which was really lovely. And it's got his regiment badge on the uh, road sign as well. But we won't get as far as that today. Let's we'll try and see. So through there, D, through there, so the other side of the cone, that all used to be wasteland and used to be able to look straight through up to the hospital. All those buildings are all new. That's all new residential. Um, and what they're trying to do is open it all up. They've been doing a big river project where they've been clearing out the river cone, getting rid of all the rubbish and the debris and stuff that's been chucked in it. And they want to have like an esplanade, a walkway, so people can walk along the river and enjoy the, the river and have little parks. And I mean, the, the project's ambitious. It's really nice. They've got a few new buildings out there and tall station and uh, crispy creme donuts is all out there as well. But uh, so that's the sort of the direction we're heading. Not to crispy creme donuts. That's not where we're heading. But. Morning. So uh, yeah, I was hoping, like we're out on the right just now, we'd get a clear bit on the left and you'd be able to see out that way. But it was not to be. 
and I was getting itchy feet. I, I, I just sat in the man cave and I was just checking the weather forecast and I thought, oh man, rain the next three days and no, I just want to get out. I want to get out and walk. And if I'm going to get out and walk, I'm going to walk a place I haven't walked and talked before. Might as well do a walk and talk. Why not? I'm just gathering the hound because there's a cyclist coming. He's not a big fan of bicycles. He doesn't chase them. They just scare the life out of him. Come here, bud. Good boy. Good morning. Morning. Yeah, he doesn't like him. Oh yeah, he's opened up a little bit. It's incredible how this has changed. It's like anything, isn't it? When you hit, when you get older, if you're youngsters watching, <laughs> you'll notice wherever you live, over time, it will change. And it's amazing how much, when you walk around Watford now, how much it's changed. And I remember coming down here when I worked at the school, bringing kids down here to do the river project, talking about Thomas Sawyer, talking about the fact that this was all clear countryside, open land. And I said to them, you've got to remember, you're all kids now. When you're my age and you bring your kids down here, you can say to them, I remember when all this was being built. And they all kind of looked at me like, eh, whatever. That building there, the white building, is what for General Hospital. And they're building all up around it. It's, uh, yeah, and they did that thing that kids do. Oh, Mr. Seal's talking again. <laughs> He's telling us history stuff. <laughs> But it is fascinating, for, even for me, I walk along here and I go back five years, most of these massive buildings that have now got people living in weren't here, didn't exist. Give it another 10 years, it'll be like they've always been here. It's, it's a strange, strange old situation. That camera dropping is driving me mad today. Anyway, I'll flip the camera around for a little bit. Like I say, I don't know, how long have I been going for? 17 minutes, I said it wasn't going to be overly long, but there we go. You can see my cheery face again. And me huffing and puffing. Fear the beard, people, fear the beard. The weirdy beardy out for a walk. It's all good. Hope you're all well. Hope wherever you are, things are okay. You're all in good health and weather's okay. I know it's going to be different all around the world. Some people are already heading into winter, it's getting a lot colder. Beard is on point, I hope so. Needs a trim. I'm getting trampy again. I'm getting tramp under a bridge again. Last time I could cut it all short was after FarmCon, which was July. Um, so, needs doing. Needs doing. That's all good. Thank you everyone for joining me this morning. I know it's difficult and I know Barris and a few other people messaged me, caught the last stream but did say for them, it's difficult if people are just getting ready to go to work, they might catch it. Some people are at work, some people are coming in from work. It depends where you are in the world. And I can't, unfortunately, please everybody. It's that difficult situation, as always, of what do you do, you know? And if I only stream at nine o'clock at night, that will preclude some people from watching it. And like I said, walk and talks in the summer is fine. But in the winter, nine o'clock at night is pitch black, which isn't going to help anybody. So... 53 viewers. It's lovely. So now we're getting to the boring bit, unfortunately. So we're out off the Ubry Way now. That would have continued on the Ubry Way and joined on to the Lower High Street Railway. And uh, we're going to come out into Upwell. It's called Oxy Park. There's a couple of odd bits here. And then uh, I don't really want to... I'm probably going to stop filming when we get to the end of Oxy Park. Only because, like I said, we get to the main road... And we walk up the side of Thomas Soy Way, which is for all intents and purposes an industrial estate. But you can see a lot more clearly the back of the hospital, Watford Football Ground. And I wanted to show you the Thomas Soy Way sign, but I know when we hit the road, there'll be people tooting and being abusive. Now that's more like it. 58 watching, 62 likes, which means some people have dropped on, some people have dropped off. Chris, morning in Pennsylvania. I was only talking about Pennsylvania last night to my kids. I was talking about history, boring them as well. And um, I said when I did um, the map tour four, oh my God, what's the map? Bucks County. When I did the first map tour on FS19, I did a little bit of history about Pennsylvania. And the state of Pennsylvania was started by William Penn, hence Pennsylvania. And William Penn lived in Buckinghamshire. 
just across the border from Hertfordshire. And uh, I, I did a little bit of that on the Bucks County video, but... And there was a school just up the road from us called William Penn School, named after him. He went out to America. So Pennsylvania came from William Penn. There you go. <laughs> Lots of history all thrown in. What a day! What a day we'll come out into the sun in a moment. Oh man. It's only 22, I'm absolutely roasting. Like I said on my video yesterday, I sat in the man cave last week, had the wood burning stove on because it was cold. And we were like, well that's it, it's autumn, heading into winter. Data warning? I've got unlimited data, what's that all about? Anyway. It's all good, I'll flip the camera back around again in a minute. Because we're going to come across another part. The cone sort of diverges here. Hang on, D. Wait, 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 wait. D. Thank you. You're very panty, mate. You're right. We'll stop and get some water in a minute, mate. All right. Good boy. Five degrees where you are. Oh, found here, Sally, mate. I just. Uh, my, my eyesight just caught out your name. I haven't seen any other specific names. I think I've seen Hydra and a few others if I bring the camera up close to me. But yeah, it's been, it's been unseasonably warm here, which is weird. I think we'd all kind of got ready for a cold snap. I think tomorrow's going to be warm but raining, then the temperature drops back down to about 14, I think. So it hasn't lasted long. Don't know if it would or not. So anyway, yeah, the walk, I'd already walked about a mile and a bit to get to the, where I started recording. And um, when I finished recording, I've probably got a mile and a bit back. So it'll work about five, maybe, something like that. All depends. It's interesting, actually, I'll say it's interesting. You might find it interesting for you Americans. Part of the River Colne. When we did the river project here with the school, we came down, the guys were clearing the river, they had all volunteers. What they've started issuing, what for Borough Council, you can get a permit for cray fishing. Because the American red crayfish that was introduced into the UK many years ago is an invasive species and it kills off everything. So they're trying to get the red crayfish out of the water. So they're giving people permits to catch them. So you can come and catch crayfish down the river. Um, those Americans, pesky Americans, invasive species, man. <laughs> I'm only joking, you know I am. I'm only kidding. So cross Oxy Park, then we'll come out to the main road. What I'll do, you know what, I'll carry on until we get onto uh, Thomas Sawyer Way, because it's only about another five minutes from here, so I might as well carry on. 64 people at the moment, 71 likes. It's all good. That wasn't a Spitfire. You can tell a Merlin engine. Whoa. No, it wasn't a Spitfire. You do get them every now and again. Not very often. I'll tell you why you do get them a lot. There's obviously a guy that owns them. When you get out towards Colchester Way, obviously Duxford Air Museum's out that direction anyway. Um, Spitfire's one of my favorite aircraft in the world. I've got this lovely book on Spitfires. And we went to the Spitfire diamond anniversary at Duxford many years ago and for Christmas last year Mr. City P bought me a pen I thought it was a fountain pen I can't remember now but the wood on the pen or like the casing of the pen is made from Spitfire propeller and it's got a certificate of authenticity so it's just oh it's awesome but yeah that Merlin engine whoa you can't beat it Where are you going, bud? Come on. Actually, the road's not as busy as I thought it was going to be. I was just worried. Whenever you get to a main road, you always get people tooting and abusing you. And <laughs> I can take a bit of abuse. <laughs> Come on, bud. So, yeah. Uh, I'll get back. I'll probably do the first episode of Alma. Will be normal. Me just kind of arriving and explaining what we're going to do I suppose and then I've got to work out when I'm going to stream because I enjoyed the two streams I did um, 
last week and I want to do more this week so it's just kind of getting into that rhythm and finding when works for me I'll turn the camera up around in a moment but I suppose depending where you're from big city or countryside for me so we're heading back into the main bit of the town which is uh it's busy and crowded and but actually it's not that bad <laughs> not that bad no, I'm I'm taking a much slower amble today. I did a bit more Paris 10 training the other day without the Bergen. Oh, blimey. Like I said before, it's my speed. I've got to improve my speed. I've been watching that new series on BBC Soldier about uh, infantry soldiers at Catterick going from civvies to becoming soldiers. Infanteers. And, uh, oh man, it's a brilliant series. And when they're doing their ruck marches, I'm watching that thinking, yep, I feel your pain. <laughs> I know what that's like. <laughs> but uh, it's just the speed. That's the thing with it. But today's was just supposed to be out and about. And it feels warmer than 22 degrees. I'm going to say that for a start. So, like I said, we'll get onto here. And... Uh, yeah, this road here that we're coming to, Thomas Soilway, never existed before, and it's weird. Sorry for the road noise and a bit much, I think, but... I'll bring the camera a little bit closer, so hopefully you can still hear me. Back over the cone again, a little crisscrossing. There used to be a... is it still here? Harley Davidson place on the corner. Yeah, it's still here. See? Yeah, Triumph and Harley Davidson. So if you're in the market for a, a Harley or a Triumph. I must stop in for a brew today, it's too warm for a brew. And I don't always say if it's hot you should have a cup of tea. I don't, there's no logic to that. I don't know if you can see, oh you probably can't actually, without me zooming in. Past the traffic lights in the distance, there's a railway bridge. That's the lower high street all stop in line. It runs up towards Euston, there's a bridge there. But yeah, hang on, swing that around. D! There we go, Harley Davis. This way. And we should get to the sign in a moment, and we'll be able to see a lot better. The back of the football ground, back of the hospital. Here's the sign, D away from the road. There we go. Thomas so Sawyer Way. I salute you, sir. And like I said before, when I did my uh, walk and talk about the air cadets and about Leeson Airfield, he was a sound bloke. I mean, such a great guy. And he took that 2F air cadet spirit with him when he joined the artillery and then joined the commandos. And Oh, he was an amazing guy. So sad when he passed away. Well, passed away, but he was killed. But Anyway, so this is Thomas Sawyer Way. Over in that direction is the back of the football ground. over there. So that's the back of the football ground, just there. And just off to the left is the hospital. So I'm just going to walk back up to Soil Way, back up and around. But uh, the road noise is a little bit louder. I know people have just joined me. D, away from the road, come here. Come on, away from the road, it's busy. There's a good boy, right there. So we are at 30 minutes. I'm going to turn the camera around. Go and flip this round. Oh, dearie me. Having a mare, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Back on me. So that's it. I think we're at 30 minutes. I'm back onto Thomas Sawyer Way. Did a bit of the Eby Way. We're heading back up around. I'll be heading back towards home in a little while. Um, I just want to say hello. Come on, have a chat. A little bit about the Eby Way. Done a bit of history about a few different things. And uh, incidentally, what for General Hospital, which I just pointed out, all of my children were born there. Not that you need to know that, but they were all born at Watford General. Brilliant hospital. Uh, yeah. And that's it from me for today's walk and talk along the Ebury Way. 
I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed spending a bit of time with me. Thank you for spending a bit of time with me. Um, just enjoyed it. It's just nice being out and about, enjoying the weather before it starts to pour me rain and before the temperature plummets. So, uh, yeah, I'll probably see you later on. We didn't get any mods yesterday on console, they did on PC. If we get any console mods today, I'll do a mod review. And when I get back, I'll make a start on the first episode of Alma. Apologies, I'm sweating profusely. Take care, everybody. Have a great day, whatever you're doing. And I will see you on the next one, whether it be at my computer, D, no, or another walk and talk. Take care, everyone. Stay safe. Bye.